Well, here is part two of this particular snippet of the Kapustin Tokatina. If you haven't watched part one, then maybe do that first. But I'm going to go right to the snippet I was practicing yesterday here in Measure 10. And here it is. So all I'm focused on is hitting that chord. Now my torso should be probably centered, maybe a little bit off to the left because, you know, I'm going to play right around here in the middle of the measure. I'll actually go ahead and start shifting my torso and I'll just do a very quick reminder to, to do that. How shall I do it? Let's put it? T equals, let's say, B4. And all that means is I'm, here is E5, middle E, this is B4 right here. Okay, so here I am. Making sure to prepare the rest of my fingers. Not quite sure what that two is doing there. Let me get rid of it. Okay. So, just holding this down. too hard. Therefore I'll practice this a little bit where I've depressed my G. I'm holding on to this B D sharp A and if you can see through my veil I'm supposed to play it inside the keys, that vertical arrow. Still torso centered on this B4. Now G by the way I'm not saying to play it inside the key but when I use these vertical arrows pointing up or down, I guess I'm more, mostly thinking about the thumb. So in my case, the thumb is still on the usual edge of the white key position, and that means the second and all long fingers will be playing right next to the black keys. Okay, so I'm not trying to do this. I'm trying to do this, and I've got my C covered by finger five playing at this crazy edge. So just holding this, holding the my starting position, perhaps you can call it, and I'm about to do right on my um, dynamic. You, you can't see it, but it's mezzo forte. Okay, so that's good enough. Now backing up to this chord. And obviously that note right here, the F. Right, so holding both of those down now. And I'm getting ready to strike the G. And you can see that I'm not really yet over this bottom C with my pinky. So that's going to possibly be a problem. And then I'm going to kind of play that right hand chord on a diagonal as I try to move my hand inside the keyboard, but already I've done that. I'm just holding it, holding the F, getting ready to play the G, but gonna have to move to that C as, as in as straight a line as possible. Right, it's really close. So by the time I hit the G, I'm right there on C. step even further back. So this half covered right hand chord, I'm playing it on the edges of the white keys. And then I have to work on that move in my right hand. And that's finally where the problem is revealed, this kind of difficult to coordinate move. You could obviously hear how un uneven it all was. And it's okay, it's not too bad. Probably better than last time, but still. Now, let's do it one more time and I want to check something.
Okay, so you can see the notes I just played right here. Whoops. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in and I'm checking for how well am I playing these notes together. So that was just my starting chord, so it doesn't matter. I'm just holding it, getting ready to play. And then finally, you see right here, that's the that chord, which I have to play and move my hand inside the keyboard. So, so it's pretty typical, typical um, the top note of this chord that I lined up with my cursor is the first one. And then there is that time gap until I bring down the lower two notes of this chord. And then I go from here to the left hand. All right, so my left hand plays this G followed by, I'm not quite sure why it's not moving. Let's do it this way. Ah, okay, so that's my first note. This is my second note. And that here is my final uh, chord, my, my goal point. Now, there's a big problem here. First of all, you can see that my final chord Let's say the, the right hand notes are more or less together, but the bottom note in the left hand is quite a bit later. So we're obviously talking milliseconds, but still it's significant, about 30 or so milliseconds. I'd like it to be more or less precisely together. More annoying than that is the fact that if you look here, and you maybe kind of connect this time. Yeah, you see that kind of highlighted rectangle. That time space as compared to this time space, it's much shorter. And that indicates that I'm not being reasonably precise at all. That's another problem that I'll have to fix. Anyway, let's just continue for right now. So, put this down, about to play. And I can hear that problem. I hear how I'm rushing into that G. Because it has to be... Ta -ta -ta, right? But fast. Ta -ta -ta. And I'm not getting it. So one, one thing that I think I mentioned last time is this idea of reducing my goal. I'm not going to play that final chord. I'm going to stop right before it. So my goal now is to nearly, what is this? Yeah, like this, and then I have to let go, right? So I'm letting go before striking the final chord. Okay, now I'll back up. Holding with F, uh, getting ready to, to strike that chord diagonally. Holding the F, striking the chord diagonally, and then, right, I'm getting a ta ta. Ta ta. And making sure it's as rhythmic as I can make it be. And then, let's actually hold down this first chord. Still, still a little bit out of control. That's a little better. Feels a little sluggish, but at least I'm happy with the control part. Oh, by the way, let's check this. Uh, missed my... So, yeah, that's okay. I mean, I'm kind of thinking about it, but honestly, it's too lit. There is not enough material for me to make any meaningful analysis. Let's keep going here. 
Okay, so. A little more. Yeah, that at least gives me some context. Ta ta ta. And there it is. And what I want to do is really bring out the length of that syncopated uh, quarter note chord with the arrow. Okay. Let's see now. To slow down the running of this cursor. There it is. <laughs> Interesting. So now I'm making sure to play the left hand the soonest. You can see the bottom rectangle, which represents my lowest note, F, comes in the f before the notes of the right hand, which are kind of spread out in this funny way. So that, that's a bit of a problem, but let's not dwell too much upon it. What I'm a little bit concerned about is I'm not forcing myself to hold that F all the way to like that, right? If I, if I played it perfectly, that's what it should look like. Connected all the way to this G right here, in the, the very bottom note. So yeah, I need to work on this, but actually in terms of rhythm, I don't think it's too bad. It's not great, but that uh, rectangle, if you like, and uh, this rectangle yeah well anyway it's, it's still not enough material uh, okay c continuing so the point i'm trying to make is here i am looking over the same snippet again trying to improve it further i'm not trying to do the impossible which is make it perfect in in one you know or two 10 minute sessions i'm just making sure that i understand the problem i think it through i focus on trying to get it better and then just set it aside, sleep on it, come to it, come back to it another time. All right.